Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you might be, and welcome to another day live at the Waterhole. My name is Kayla McCurdy, and I will be hosting you for the next three hours. So I hope you get ready to enjoy the wonderful sights and sounds that you will uh, that you'll be seeing uh, hopefully today. Um, if this is your first time joining, how exciting! You've chosen a good day. I suppose it's a it's a Monday, hey? Wouldn't that be a great way to start your week? And we are currently at Aldonio, which is situated in Kenya and sandwiched between Savo National Park and the Amboseli. If you would like to ask me any questions or any comments, you're also most welcome to do so. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is either if you're watching on the YouTube stream, you can just comment in the chat. Or even better, if you head over to the Wild Earth website and pop your questions into the question box. You'll also be able to do that, I think, through the app. So maybe go and download that too. But I really am looking forward uh, to, to chatting to you all today. There we have a brave zebra just sneaking in on the right. No, none of these big bulls seem to be too perturbed by it at the moment. But once again, it's just interesting to see the older the bull, the more tolerant they are of other animals. Let's see, this bull with a broken tusk. Are you going to chase them away? You're also just going to sneak in and have a drink. <laughs> just swished its trunk at one zebra that thought was particularly close. Oh, I'll just go through the middle. Whoops. Looks like they're having to stick their trunks in quite deep today. Perhaps it needs some filling up. But because this is a pump pan, I don't know if it's a solar pump which means that it would just then naturally fill up on its own um, or if it has to be switched on manually. I imagine it must be some kind of a solar pump or have be have like a control switch or something as to different times of the day when it would be when it would be pumped full with water. Off it goes. Virginia, you are correct. It is quite fun to watch. It is indeed. The youngster going back to have a drink now, hopefully in peace and quiet. Nope. You can see there's ample room to have a drink, but he, the older bull might push him off. There we go. Here we are. The usual culprits. Lots of bird life and the occasional crocodile. Maybe we can have a closer look at some of the birds. But right off the bat, you've got a hummelkop on the left. You've got the grey heron. A very tall bird. And it looks like white-faced ducks. And a red-knobbed coot, also just on that little island. Spurring goose having a sleep. <laughs> Not ready to start the day. I don't blame it. Head just tucked nicely under the wing. And you can now see that beautiful iridescence. And 
and that just really depends on which which direction the light hits we're here and had a quick gobble of something elephants being quite placid and then all the other animals slowly coming in again i'm always excited when the warthogs come down to the water's edge they're quite entertaining But just like what we uh, saw in Olifant's West at the Naledi camera, looks like one adult cow and her offspring. I suppose, again, you might get, you know, in individuals within a breeding herd that just want to do their own thing, that want to go and have a drink a bit earlier, so they could potentially split off and rejoin the herd at a later point it's not like their sense of smell is entirely adapted and then of course they're constantly communicating with one another uh, through infrasounds but fairly nervous around the water's edge as, as of course all animals are it's better to be wary rather than too complacent otherwise you might find yourself in a spot of trouble Also see the ox peckers at the distance just taking off and landing again on the kudu. I'm sure they'll be also be taking advantage of having a quick morning drink. Isn't that quite nice? You don't really need to go anywhere. You just go where your where your food source travels. And then have a drink that way. If you're wondering about why those warthogs are feasting on the carcass is that warthogs are actually omnivores so they are, for the most part they feed on grasses and roots fruit however as it starts to get drier and drier and there's not a lot of nutritious grasses and, and the other things that we mentioned they need to try and get their protein intake. Now, I've seen I've seen uh, warthogs feeding on the partially digested grasses. Helicopter flying over my house, um, but they will of course eat meat as well. So that's what they are doing there. This is so fascinating. This is something that we don't get to see every single day. But what a wonderful day it has been, filled with loads of elephants from all over. As you've been saying, I think it's just going to get better and better with the, the elephants. And we're going to hopefully see a bunch more different species that we maybe haven't seen before coming down to the various water holes. But I hope you had fun. And we'll see what happens with that zebra carcass tomorrow. So make sure you join us then.